Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sketch and today I'll be showing you how to draw yourself in the classic 80s strawberry shortcake style. You can follow along on paper or in a drawing program. Um, the tutorial is like supposed to be super beginner friendly, so you don't need art experience to make your own character. The first thing that we're going to start with is the head. Uh, you're going to want to start near the top of your canvas so that you can uh, fit the body in once we're done with this. You also don't want it to be too small of a circle because you're going to be drawing facial features and stuff on it. So keep it like a decently sized circle. Once you have your circle, you're going to divide it in half, up and down, and then sideways through the middle. And off of the center of the sideways and vertical um, guideline, you want to draw two halves. So you're going to have these four triangles at the bottom of the circle. From there, you're going to want to draw three more circles. Uh, I like to put them so that the center lines or the center port points where it is as fat as it can go are on resting on your giant circle. And then in the middle, your circle for the chin will be a little bit smaller. You want to make sure that they rest on the middles of these original guidelines that you put on your main circle. So this one is resting in the middle and of both my circle and the middle guideline of the big circle. And these are on the center guidelines of the diagonal lines. The next step that you want to take is you want to make it so that you're doing the outline for the head. So we have all the guides and everything. So you're just gonna wanna trace around them lightly and with um, a like kind of like swooping sort of stroke. So you don't want your lines to be like completely straight. You just wanna sort of like let them flow. Think of like putting a blanket over like multiple balls or something. From there, you actually have all the guidelines that you need to be able to place the nose and the mouth. Drawing atop the two cheek guidelines that you made, the two cheek circles. In the middle, you'll put a small oval and that'll represent your nose. And then in between your cheek circles, your chin, and the nose guideline, you can put your mouth. I like to sort of exaggerate the downward curve of it so that the smile is like very like cutesy and I add these little cheek flex too on the edges, these little wrinkles, kind of like how um, Spongebob has. The more exaggerated the V, the cuter the smile. Now, if you still have the guides for your uh, cheek circles, you're gonna be extra good for this step. Uh, you're gonna draw a line straight up from the widest point of your cheek circles. And then on the line of where you drew your guideline for the nose, you're gonna put the eyes. Now these are just small ovals that go up and the middle of them should meet in the center of the main head guideline. You don't want the eyes to be too big because of the fact that this art style is like pretty old. So we haven't gotten into like putting massive eyes on characters yet. So I always draw them a little bit smaller than I think that I should. This is also the step where you want to put in the neck. I'd say that it's about the same size as the chin circle. So if you draw that straight down, two lines straight down, and then a little smile curve at the bottom, that'll make a nice tube for you to build your body off of when we get to that step. If you've made it this far, you've done some of the most difficult stuff with the face. We're actually all done using the guidelines. So we can erase everything that we didn't uh, use before. So leaving the nose, the mouth, and the eyes. And uh, in the middles of uh, the cheeks and the bridge of the nose, we're actually gonna put three freckles. These are optional, not all characters had freckles, but I want mine to have them. So I put them. Um, and I also put in eyelashes because that's just what I felt like for this character. You'll notice there's also a very small little lip or uh, tongue. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be in this art style, but I find it a lot of times on Strawberry Shortcake's expressions. So that's just what I put. Next, it's time to accessorize. Uh, Strawberry Shortcake characters a lot of times have hats and hair. So um, unless you're going for sort of a bald gnomish uh, person, uh, I would add this step. The hats are generally the size of a whole head stacked on top once you get the brim and the top of the hat in. So um, this one actually rests. I wanted it to rest a little bit over their eyes. So my position for the hat circle is a little bit uh, low but it's a guideline for just how the size should be, not necessarily the shape. Um, I decided to go with cowboy hat. 
which has a wide oak brim and a little kind of butt shape for the top of the hat. And I threw in, because I want this character to be an apple fritter based character, um, I threw in some apple slices and the apple with an arrow through it. Um, you'll also notice that I put in the hair already. Um, the hair is supposed to kind of look very yarn-like because the I think Strawberry Shortcake is designed to look like a stuffed doll. So um, I use these sort of teardrop shapes to um, show that there's almost like a loose, a loose coiling to the hair. Um, and so I drew the hat first so I can put, put the hair coming out from beneath it. If you have more of the head showing, like bangs and stuff, I would draw um, some of the some of the hair pieces going like up and out and like sort of being stiffer. And um, it can help to figure out where your bang line is by uh, drawing like a little fake hairline with like a little M shape on the top of your head. So you know how big the forehead is gonna be. I try to make the forehead as big as possible because again, these are like very like childlike cute doll designs. So the forehead helps exaggerate that. Next, we're gonna be doing the body. So if you have the head, you wanna make sure that you have at least space at the bottom to be able to draw the body in. Um, you already have the neck, so that's like a good starting point. Um, and if you notice, the body is about two heads high. So you're gonna draw two larger circles underneath your neck. Um, and at the bottom line, that'll be where you're going to be putting your feet. So I like to mark the bottom of the lower circle with a straight line across so I know where to draw the bottoms of my feet. And then a little bit lower, I, I can't really give an exact measurement, but a little bit lower than the middle point of these two circles. I'm putting a straight line across and this will be where the crotch is. For your next step, you're gonna be drawing in the shoulders. Um, I like to line up the sides, the widest points on my shoulders that um, I draw out with a gentle curve, kind of like a little swoop down, almost like a parentheses shape. Um, I like to make the widest point as wide as the cheeks. So if you want, you can draw a little guideline down, straight down um, to show how wide your shoulders should be. I'd say the next step is probably the most difficult part for the body. Um, this is drawing in the arms. Uh, I like to think of them as little macaronis uh, that get thinner at the top and fatter at the bottom. So the way that's easiest in my opinion to do this is to draw a line straight across from your middle, from the middle of your two body circles. And then right below that line, you wanna draw two smaller circles, a little bit out to the side of where your shoulders are. So if you think about it, you know, they're, about one circle away from the middle of the body. And then from there, you just, with swooping, swooping lines, kind of like a banana shape, you connect your shoulders down to your hands. Thankfully, the style is relatively simple, so the, this is almost as complicated as the hands get. We're gonna add a little detail in a second here. From there on, you're gonna draw the lower portion of the body. Um, I like to start my lines for my hips at about halfway up from where the bottom of the arms are. So you'll draw in like a guideline here, and then you're gonna draw two circles on your very bottom line. These two circles for, well, two circles ends up being four circles because you want there to be uh, two feet. So there's gonna be two circles on the bottom line and they will go in between a triangle that you draw from the top of the crotch to the bottom of the foot line. And so you want that to be a really skinny triangle so that you have more room for the legs. And then from the middles of your hands straight down, you're gonna draw another line and that's also where you want your uh, outer circle to hit. So you know about the size, about the size of the foot. And then once you get those four circles in, you're gonna go and make a small circle around them. This will make sure, this is sort of just using those circles that you use for the feet as a guide so that you can make a nice oval shape to be able to fit your shoes. And then for the actual leg portion, you're going to want to draw a curving, another curving banana line down from the middle of the arms to the center of the outer circle. So you should have like two pretty thick legs that start thinner at the top and get a little bit fatter at the bottom. And then this next step is relatively simple. We're just gonna be drawing the mittens on our hands and uh, some details on the shoes. So you can erase the back guideline for this circle of the foot and leave the front one. This will give you sort of like a toe shape. 
and then um, the next step is to draw in the um, the shoelaces I like to think of them as two cartoon butterfly shapes it's very simple to draw just figure eight kind of things um, and then you want to draw in the fingers for your hands luckily this is relatively simple because they're just mittens so you don't need to worry too much about proportions um, I like to start at the back of my hand drawing just a small U shape so that I have a um, thumb sort of shape and then I also draw another U shape here sticking out just a bit farther it's kind of fat really you're trying to just give them that oven mitt sort of look and then once you have in your fingers and such you can go ahead and erase your guidelines for your uh the palm of your hand is what i would call that circle before and then from the base of your thumb straight across uh you're gonna draw the curve for where your wrist is so for me i put um, my wrists on a curve so you kind of want more of a parentheses shape and you want it to end a little bit above where your um, initial like wrist line at the base of the thumb starts. Uh, this will give the illusion that you kind of have more of like a round shape to your hands and it makes it look uh, cleaner than if you just did a line like straight across. Um, and then it also won't dissect the fingers at all. Um, and you can see here at the bottom too, just very quickly, I um, drew a little bit of an outline. So you're gonna do like a straw kind of like thin shape to draw in the soles of the shoes. Um, now, if you made it this far, congratulations, you completely drew the body. And that is probably, I'd say the most difficult part. Um, the rest of this is sort of just up to you and how you feel like you want your character to look. I look for inspiration through both my own outfits, not for this particular one, but um, for my like personal design. And I look on Pinterest for um, different sorts of styles of outfits that I want to draw to um, figure out what I want the character to be like. Now, for this step, I keep my clothes very simple. I don't want, I want there to be a lot of open space so that I can draw in patterns later. And I don't want the style to be too complicated. So starting from the middle of my character, I draw a straight line across and everything above this line, the seams or um, hems, if you will, will curve upward in a lowercase n shape and below will curve in a lowercase u shape. The farther you get away from that line, the more exaggerated it will be. So you can see for the waist here, I do just a very light kind of like banana-like curve and um, up here for around the shoulders and stuff, I have more of a, an end shape and that is still that soft curve. Now, one of the big features that shows up in a lot of Strawberry Shortcake characters, but I didn't really show very well in this diagram, so I wanted to show it over here, is um, these flower ruffles. So um, Strawberry Shortcake has these around the shoulders of her apron, for example. And so if you think of the hole in the middle, that's wherever your arm or sleeve is gonna go. So when you turn slightly to the side, that hole gets squished. And so you just draw the petals out from however your hole is. And from there on, they'll look like these fat, beautiful, full ruffles. Um, also for sleeves and pant legs, um, they tend to put ruffles at the bottom of those. If you do, or just even if you don't put ruffles, um, it's good to, do a thin at the top, fat at the bottom, sort of bell teardrop shape um, for them to be able to show like a fullness and a puffiness that shows up on a lot of like the old Strawberry Shortcake dolls and um, like that doll style for that era. Uh, here I also indicated just, you don't have to do this, but if you have higher boots, I indicated the top of the boots here. Next, I draw in my patterns. Um, I don't want there to be patterns on every single, like very like thick grouping on every single um, piece of clothing that I have. So I kept it just on the shirt and the bandana is where I have my, um, my plaid and my stripes. And then I just drew in more details. So Strawberry Shortcake characters have like a lot of like stitching and lace and little things like that that make them sort of unique and decorated and everything. So for example, I put this little stitch design on the bottom of the skirt. I did those loopies that you sometimes find on cowboy boots. 
And um, if I don't put patterns some places, I like to put details. If I don't put details, then I put patterns. Um, so on the vest, I put the buttons and the labels and stuff so that they have a little Western vest. And all the body parts underneath now, you can feel free to erase and you'll have a nice clean sort of sketch to be able to work off of uh, when you're uh, rendering your character. So this is sort of an extra step. Um, you don't need to necessarily go this far, but I feel like it makes it extra clean and really gives it the you know whole style that you're looking to have. Um, I take my sketch and I lower the opacity, I make it, or if you're doing this on paper and following along on paper, you can put another piece, piece of paper over your sketch. And from there, you're gonna want to trace it with a, I use a very saturated brown color because I want um, it to feel very warm and cozy. I make my outline with a sort of rough pencil texture. So um, you can use uh, colored pencils or a pencil like brush if you're using a drawing program. And you're just gonna fill in your sketch and draw it very loosely. Um, there's not many details. I wouldn't put the details for the pattern in because I like to use color for those. Um, your next step is gonna be picking your color palette. Um, for this character, I wanted them to be very like cute and charming and apple reminiscent. So I pick one brown and three colors that I associate with the fruit or dessert that I picked. Um, these three colors don't include the skin tone or the white color that I choose to use. Um, the white color is sort of a soft ivory, as you can see. Um, I pick that color because it really warms up the sketch and makes it not um, so harsh to look at. It really softens the colors. Um, the three colors that I choose are very, are all warm because I uh, wanted it to be sort of like matching my warm uh, outlines. So I choose a warm green, a warm yellow, so kind of like an orange, and a warm red. These are all apples, apple colors, so I thought that that was like really fitting for them, and I think that it turned out really cute. Um, you want to make sure that your colors are all split up so that you can tell the different pieces of clothing apart. So for example, I don't do my skirt and my shirt green, or you can't tell where they start and stop. I do my shirt green and my uh, skirt orange, if that makes sense. And next, using the ivory color and a darker version of all my normal colors, I add a little accent. So I add um, the stripes for my shirt, the uh, stitching details around my skirt, and then I fill in plaid for all my red spaces. Um, you'll also notice here that on the head where the hair is, um, I do a sort of like these little curves, these little parentheses on the hair, following the fatness of it. Um, this is to give it more of a yarn-like look. Um, you can skip this step if you want, but I think it really gives it more of like a toy or doll-like charm to it. And it really shows more emphasis on the strands so that you can sort of like pick them apart and see them like more three-dimensionally, in my opinion. The next step is really what gives it that polish so that you really get that um, old like Hallmark card illustration look. Um, what I like to do is you can see the colors that I picked down here. Um, I have, because they have a pale complexion, I have this orange tone, this bright orange that I use for the cheeks. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna draw like the soft shirt circle that you do in art class, the spheres that they show you on how to do shading. You're gonna wanna gently do that around the cheeks so that you have a darker area at the bottom that sort of blends out and a lighter area on top. Um, and then a very small, very light patch of shading in between the bridge and the nose. Um, this will sort of give them like a warm, flushed face that makes them look really adorable. Um, and at the tops of those cheeks, if you want, um, I chose to use a uh, warm yellow color here um, that is very light to sort of give like a sunshine look. And I put that at the tops of the cheeks and around the outer edges of my drawing. Now for the shadows, I use this dark red or this dark brown and I put it under the bridge of my hat and on the right side of like most of my drawing and also uh, around close to where 
your sleeves and arms are close to the body because you won't get very much light that is getting to that point. Um, I just use that dark red color, even over the green spaces, to gently, if you do this very, very lightly, uh, add soft shadows to the whole drawing. Um, I didn't use it really on the face except for under the brim of the hat. And I also used it uh, around the bottom of the skirt, the underside of the skirt. All of this shading and highlighting is very subtle. So it, um, it takes a really light hand to be able to do it. Uh, I always gradually make it darker or lighter depending on if you're doing highlights or shadows. I would do this just very gradually so that you can see how much of it you want. And when you're satisfied, you are all done. This is your finished strawberry shortcake character. Um, mine is apple fritter and uh, I'm super happy with how they turned out. I think they came out really cute. If you have any questions or want me to go into more detail on like the outfit design, how I pick my colors, how I pick my clothes and stuff, um, you can just leave a comment or if anything was confusing, let me know and I'll try to clarify. Um, and I hope it came out good. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.